Hello, my name is Elizabeth from Drosser of Botanical, and I have a certificate in botanical illustration from the New York Botanic Garden, as well as a master's in environmental science. And I'm going to share with you today my favorite botanical art books and botany books. If you're new to botanical art and illustration, you might like the botanical illustration course with the Eden Project. This book is very beginner friendly. It has um, a lot of tutorials and it's a great introduction to the different types of mediums that botanical artists like to use. If you consider yourself a more intermediate artist and you have some experience with watercolor or you want to improve your watercolor skills, Isaac's book Botanical Illustration from Life is my absolute favorite book for this. It has many tutorials and it explains um, more challenging topics like aerial perspective that most books don't cover. Um, this is actually the book that convinced me that I wanted to get my certificate in botanical art. More advanced botanical artists will already be from more advanced botanical artists will already be familiar with this book, but this is ASBA's Botanical Art Techniques. ASBA is the American Society of Botanical Artists, um, and this book features tutorials from many of the members. All of the illustrations in this book are by professional artists who spend anywhere from four to 200 hours on a single illustration. So there's a very wide range of subjects represented as well as techniques. ASBA also has a quarterly journal available to members called The Botanical Artist. Um, every issue of The Botanical Artist features articles by members of ASBA, so it's really interesting to see what everyone is working on. No matter what your experience level is with botanical art, you should also have some botany books. A lot of people just starting to get into botany will start with um, trees and shrubs, and you can actually identify trees and shrubs in the winter using one of these two books. Woody Plants in Winter features black and white line drawings of fruit and twigs. And this is an older book, um, The Fruit and Twig Key to Trees and Shrubs. This book has a very um, unique style. The twigs and fruit are actually black and white photographs, so it's a very accurate representation of what you might find. But there is also a dichotomous key, so you can practice keying out a specimen. But um, the photos also help. Newcomb's Wildflower Guide. Um, this book has a dichotomous key, um, but it's pretty simple to use. There are descriptions for every plant as well as line illustrations, um, and some of the illustrations have color. Plant morphology is an essential skill to have as a botanical illustrator. Um, in the New York Botanic Garden Certificate Program, for illustration. Um, Dick Rao teaches the morphology class and he recently published this book, The Science Behind Flowers, which covers most of the material that we discuss in class. And this book is unique because he worked with a photographer who does stacked photography. So every detail in the photos is in focus. In the first botany class that I ever took, we used Wildflowers and Shrubs and Flowering Plant Families by Wendy Zomlifer. Wildflowers and Shrubs is a key to plants of Eastern North America. Um, there are illustrations as well as a dichotomous key. Sometimes the key can be a little tricky to use and it might send you to the wrong plant, so you might have to 
trace your steps back and figure out where you went wrong. Wendy Zomlifer is another one of my favorite artists. Um, she does pen and ink illustrations. And this book contains a representative from every single plant family with all of the parts that you would need to identify that family. And it has a very nice feature in the back, um, which is an illustrated glossary. So every botanical term that you would ever need to know is not only defined, but also illustrated in this book. Once you're ready for a more advanced botany book, um, there are botany manuals available for every region. So I have the Gleason and Cronquist Manual of Vascular Plants. This is Northeastern United States and adjacent Canada. So the smaller book is the Dichotomous Key. So you would use the Dichotomous Key to determine what family your plant is and then work your way down to genus and species. The terminology um, can be a little bit more difficult to master in this book, but there is an illustrated companion. So if you think that you know the family or the genus and you're just trying to figure out the species, um, this book has nearly every plant in that manual and they're all illustrated in pen and ink. There is a copyright on this book, so I'm not really supposed to show you the detail, um, but these illustrations are just incredible. And I believe that many of the illustrators involved with this book are still active members of the American Society of Botanical Artists, or they are involved with the New York Botanic Garden. When I was studying botany, um, I started keeping a notebook with all of my observations. Every plant that we learned in my field botany class, um, every plant that we learned in my field botany class, um, I would enter into this book and every couple of pages was for a different plant family. I kept it, I think I kept it in alphabetical order um, just to stay more organized and sometimes I would also put a little illustration. I also kept a smaller, I also kept a few smaller notebooks that I would um, either carry out in the field or use to um, practice drawing the different features. So when I was studying fungi, I just did some little sketches explaining the new terminology that I was learning. I also like to um, get books from library book sales because you never know what you might find, um, or I go to vintage and antique shops. This is a field guide to the ferns by Cobb. Um, it's about 100 years old, but it has some of the best illustrations that I've ever seen of ferns, and it has very nice descriptions for each species. And it's a small book, which is also nice. I also recommend going to your local nature center or state park and trying to find um, books on your local geology or field guides to plants in your area. Um, here I have a field guide to the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. And this, um, this has plants and it has animals. So really anything you could come across on the trail is illustrated in here. Um, again, not as detailed as the illustrated companion to Gleason and Cronquist, but it's small, portable, a lot of people like it. You should also look for references outside of traditional botany books. Um, and I found that when I do an illustration, people want to know 
how a plant is useful. So um, I've collected a few books on herbalism. I have a handbook of Native American herbs and Eastern and Central medicinal plants and herbs. Um, I was collecting goat's rue once for a workshop and I had a really severe allergic reaction to it. I checked it out in this book and I learned that goat's rue can cause contact dermatitis. So I learned not to touch it again. I think herbalism is becoming more popular, so there are also a lot of newer books available. This is the Herbal Apothecary. Um, it doesn't have a lot of plants native to my area, but it's still interesting. Um, if you live on the west coast, it might be a little bit more relevant. And actually, a lot of these plants are, many of these plants are actually considered weeds, really. So in general, if you're looking to improve your art or define your art style, you should look at other types of art. Um, botanical art tends to be realistic. Um, some botanical artists are scientific or botanical illustrators, and their work needs to be incredibly accurate. And these are generally skills that you won't learn in your high school or your undergraduate art classes. But there are art academies that will teach in an atelier style, which is an older style of realistic drawing. Um, and books like this, Lessons in Classical Drawing, this is a this is a really good book. Every chapter has a different tutorial that you can try. So you can practice the different techniques and developing more realistic drawings. Sometimes botanical artists like to incorporate a little bit of scenery or background in their illustrations, so they're making more of a composition. If you're looking for resources that you can use for improving your composition in general or trying different drawing techniques, you can check out Essential Techniques of Landscape Drawing. So this is all um, graphite landscapes and Again, this does a really great job of explaining things like perspective and composition. And you can adapt it to any style of art. There's a nice feature on terrain. Ground planes. So there you go. Nature journalists might also like this. Thank you for joining me today for a look at some of my favorite books. If you like this content, please subscribe for more botanical art and illustration.